These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm Vinfuso. And what's that? Oh, this? Oh, it's nothing. Just a little something I found lying around. You know what? I actually can't wear this without wanting to actively kill myself. So uh, y'all gonna have to give me a minute, cause this 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 shit just ain't happening. And I ain't gonna I ain't gonna sit here in this. So, oh, that's better. Now, where was I? Right. Now, previously on this channel, I spoke about the show Gotham. A, a couple of times. A, a lot. Okay, a lot. I, I do that a lot here. I'm sorry. Sue me. And in my last Gotham video, we discussed the potential Harley Quinn that was Barbara Keene. A character who shared a fair amount of traits and mannerisms to the girl in question. And also a character that the series creators even toyed around with revealing as the Maid of Mischief. However, there was a much more obvious nod to Harley Quinn in the character of Echo. Now, when we were first introduced to this character, she was the polar opposite of her source counterpart. Not only was she seemingly mentally well, but she was also almost a bland, emotionless stoic who had little to no reaction to anything, including death threats. She's confident and maybe even a little bit smug, outright laughing off the danger that's Jerome and casually escorting detectives to Jeremiah upon request. In any and all given situations, Echo was pretty much able to keep her cool. She served as the aide and the proxy to Jeremiah, who was socially distancing himself from society in fear of his psychotic twin brother. Echo would meet with people and speak on Jeremiah's behalf as he remained hidden. She devoted her entire life to being the voice of the voiceless Valeska, her sole motivation being whatever Jeremiah's sole motivation was. Case in point, she supported his goal to rebuild Gotham City, but then immediately was in favor of his goal to try and destroy it. Whether he be face or heel, Echo was Jeremiah's constant right-hand man, woman. You get the point. And this was all with little to no prompting, so it seemed like she really didn't have a grounded moral compass of her own. She just wanted to see Jeremiah get his way, whatever way that may be. Yo, shout out to Echo, she's the real ride or die right there. Sounds like someone else we know. Not gonna point any elbows, but uh... Just saying. She'd only become more twisted with time, as an off-screen bullet to the head seemed to rattle her brain. In the ultimate attempt of proving her undying loyalty to Jeremiah, she either allowed him to shoot her, or she shot herself in his name. Now, since this is a comic book show, you're gonna have to try to roll with the logic here. Uh, and it may be lacking sometime, but it's, it's a little thing called uh, suspension of disbelief. But somehow, a bullet caused a complete personality shift. The normally calm and collected Echo suddenly became comical and crazy. Now, if this personality change wasn't enough to convince you that this was Gotham's take on Harley, uh, well then, hearing her speak should do the job. What's the matter? Don't you want to meet Jeremiah? And hey, if you're still doubting me, if you're still sitting here, Wagging your finger saying, V, I, I don't know, I, I, I think you're stretching this one. Then let me remind you that around this time, she also began wearing a red and black jester costume with a diamond design. I, I mean, come on. Ne need I say more? I will, but I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to is my point. And that's not even mentioning that she started referring to people as Puddin. Oh, Puddin, aren't you delicious? I mean, come on, I'm not imagining this. Clearly, I'm not crazy, and here to tell you just how functionally sane I am is this talking cartoon dog. Hello, noble regenerates, and happy holidays from all of us at Channel Pup. So, the discussion when it comes to Echo is very different to the discussion when it comes to Barbara Keene, regarding how they were integrated as Gotham's versions of Harley Quinn. With Barbara Keene, there's a lot of theorizing you can do, and it's open to a lot of interpretation, but with Echo, it's pretty clean cut. Gotham had just carved out a brand new Joker with Jeremiah Valeska to replace Jerome, and with him came a brand new Harley Quinn character, just as Barbara Keene started evolving away from the Harley Quinn archetype. Now, admittedly, we didn't get as much time with Echo as I think I would have liked, but that doesn't mean she didn't leave a distinct impression, as Echo was very much reminiscent of the Paul Dini Bruce Tim era of Harley Quinn. Which is great because Harley Quinn is a character that has changed so much over the years since her creation and origins in Batman the Animated Series, and it
it was nice to kind of get a return to that form. I sometimes worry that with the changes done to the character, we sometimes lose touch with what Harley Quinn was originally all about. Harley Quinn has gone from kind of an allegory for domestic abuse, through to endless horny posting, through to being more of an anti-hero akin to Deadpool. As she and her story have developed away from the Joker over the years into her forming her own character, or as most people would have you believe, but personally I think she was already her own character. Just a character that suffered at the hands of the greatest villain in fictional history, or at least one of them anyway. Because I just can't in all good faith discredit my boy Mysterio like that. With Barbara Keane we kinda got little doses of every little bit of Harley Quinn's progression and story, whereas Echo very much committed to that kind of mad love story, where she's in a very toxic relationship with the Joker. But of course, she doesn't follow the exact same story beats as what Harley Quinn did. For starters, her name is not Harleen Quinzel, and she's not a doctor at Arkham Asylum, instead being Jeremiah Valeska's trusty proxy. While she definitely works for Jeremiah, or at that stage his pseudonym, Xander Wilde, she definitely seems to have herself all together, much like Jeremiah did at that time. Well, of course, not without the occasional slip-up. Much like Jeremiah, once he went over the edge, so did she. But for a while, in like the later half of season four, they were both pretty subtle takes on the Joker and Harley Quinn, before before really evolving more into classic Joker and classic Harley going a bit more zany in season 5. Hmm, I can kind of see why she's called Echo at this point. But from here on out, this is kind of just going to be an Echo appreciation post on my end of things. Because truth be told, I don't really have that much to say this time. Probably the exact thing you shouldn't say during a collab with one of your favorite YouTubers, but hey, get out of my face. The reason why Echo was such a breath of fresh air is you gotta consider where Harley Quinn was at at this time. She was basically being used for cameo and team-up comics as a zany kind of Deadpool-esque character in the comics at this time, and standing opposite it echo as the other live action Harley Quinn, we had Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Now, no offense to Margot Robbie, but the theatrical cut of Suicide Squad is the worst fucking piece of shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Part of the reason why? Harley Quinn. They tried to tell a Paul Dini era story with their Harley Quinn, but what they actually ended up drawing most of their inspiration from was the horny posting era of Harley Quinn. But full disclosure, I'm not just bitching because she wasn't like my idea of Harley Quinn. That was just a fucking pro lapse of a movie. But like all of the subtle nuance that this story could possibly have and that this character could possibly have was gone, evaporated, boom, goodbye. So then we have Echo, who's quite a bit more subtle. She's not ridiculously over-sexualized, she's not always having smoochy smoochy with Mr. J. She's not constantly spouting one-liners about how she's a bad guy, it's what she does. She acted like an actual character in a piece of media made by professionals. Huh. Funny how that can bring better results. For starters, the tragic origins of Harley Quinn. Well, one of the things that doesn't sit right with me about the New 52 interpretation and Suicide Squad was that a lot of her origins pivots on her getting thrown into a vat of acid. What I really like about Harley Quinn's origins is kind of the subtlety of the Joker just gently unraveling another human being in front of our very eyes, simply with his words and attitude. With Echo, we don't quite have that, but it's a little better, I guess. She's, it's kind of implied that she's been kind of lobotomized with a bullet in, like, the back of her skull. And I gotta tell you, that's pretty dark. That's that's quite a bit darker than the Vat of Acid, so I, I do prefer that. And as well as that, I mean, Echo isn't called Harley Quinn. I feel like there's a bit more leeway with this, as part of what I think makes Gotham really work is that it's brand new interpretations. And I mean, subtle has never really been Gotham's thing. But it still managed to do it more tastefully than that other interpretation. I understand I should be more, you know, praising Echo based on her own merits as opposed to just how bad the other versions of Harley Quinn were at this time. And admittedly, the Margot Robbie Harley Quinn did improve quite a bit in Birds of Prey. Not a massive fan of that movie, but she did improve. But the thing is, I don't have that much to work with here, as Echo is only in, like, what, four episodes? And only in one of them does she really get any kind of substantial amount of screen time. But here's what I will say. I think the abusive relationship between the Joker and Harley Quinn is very well represented through Jeremiah and Echo. He's lobotomized her, but he doesn't just be smoochy smoochy with her after that. He's still very pushy and impolite towards her, and pretty unpredictable. You can see how he really orders her around, and views her as kind of more of a henchwoman than so much a girlfriend. Another thing that I really must praise is at this time, Echo had by far the 
best live action Harley Quinn costume. I do think the one in the upcoming Suicide Squad movie from James Gunn does top it, but this at that time was the closest thing we had to classic Harley. And I really love how that jester suit has been reinterpreted here. I'm guessing that because of the embargo on the Joker and Harley Quinn and Batman, they probably weren't allowed to give her Harley's iconic pigtails, but I think they made it work with the, um... I don't know the name of that hairstyle, but I think they made it work. It's one of those things where they haven't been allowed to use certain aspects of the character's design, but they've made a design that works on its own merits and remains just as iconic, just like what they did with Jerome Valeska. No, he didn't have the white face paint and shit, but like he had a cut off face, it's really creepy looking. It still looks iconic. Now, what I also appreciate here is that Echo wasn't it. Echo was not the last implied Harley Quinn in the Gotham series. As in the finale, after a little scrap with Barbara, <laughs> worlds collide, am I right? Echo gets injured, and then our royalty-free joke man, well, he disposes of her. She's damaged goods at this point, what's she worth? Either that or Joke Man just wasn't going to pay for her medical bills. But she doesn't seem to take the euthanasia too personally. And then Jeremiah says there are more fish in the sea, hinting at a future Harley Quinn. Which actually kind of coincides well with a brief panel from the New 52, where the Joker implies the existence of previous Harleys. An idea that was never properly explored for some reason until here. Rendering Gotham's Harley Quinn merely just an echo of things to come. See what I did there? You like that? Okay, subscribe to my channel, please. Okay, but in all seriousness, thanks again, V, for having me on your show, buddy. I hope you enjoyed working together just as much as I did. Until the next time, Vgenerates. Thanks, pup. Much appreciated. And I just knew that if there was any way to prove that I'm not crazy, it was through means of a talking cartoon dog. So you came in handy for that one. By the way, if you guys haven't already, I really highly recommend checking out Channel Pup. Guy's got a great channel, he's a lot more articulate than me, and he has a lot more hair on his head, and I'm not jealous at all about that, it's fine. Douchebag. But in all seriousness, he makes really great content, and if you guys are a fan of me, then you'll definitely be a fan of him, because he does what I do, but a lot better. And somehow he has not as many subs, and that is a crime. So I'm gonna need all you contributing degenerates to head on over to his channel and let him know who sent you. But not before finishing this video, because I still got some things I want to say. Something that should also be noted is that Echo's actress, Francesca Root Dotson, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, I kind of have a habit of doing that. But Echo's actress was originally brought in for a one-off appearance, and she only continued to appear on the show because the producers liked her performance so much. She also actually had to re-audition for the show after the decision was made to make the character more psychotic because the showrunners weren't sure that this complete character shift was in a range. And luckily, as you can see by the end result, it very much was. Also, according to Francesca, she herself watched clips from the animated series and Suicide Squad in an effort to familiarize herself with the character. You know, the character who is allegedly not Harley Quinn? Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, oh, it checks out to me. No, no, it works, it works. So now the question comes down to, do I believe that Echo was Gotham's Harley Quinn. Well, despite what everything else in this video would probably tell you, her accent, her appearance, her outfit choices, and just overall mannerisms, what, 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 despite what all of that would dictate, no. No, I do not. As a matter of fact, I think I actually called Reyes, or maybe it was Alan out on an episode of Dumb Fucks, when he listed Echo as one of his favorite Harley Quinns. If I did that, I'm gonna roll the footage. If I didn't, I'm just gonna look stupid. Uh, more than I already do. But I'm going with Echo from Gotham. Okay, I'll, I'll allow it. Echo was the show's means to an end. She was Harley Quinn without the show having a Harley Quinn. But ultimately, she was nothing more than a precursor to the Harley Quinn character. Of course, there's the obvious fact that she's not named Harleen Quinzel, but the fact that she so quickly killed off at the last minute, with the show's Joker specifically stating that there will be others. There'll never be one like you. Really? Well, I suppose there are other fish in the sea. It seems like an intentional indication that she wasn't this universe's Harley. And it even comes off as a hint that within this lore, there would actually be a Harley at some point in the distant future that we will never get to see. So, good. Th thanks for that. I'm looking forward to... not seeing that. Thanks. For the record, I think Francesca did an amazing job in the role. And she managed to bring the character to life 
without ever actually being declared the character. She was an absolute highlight of the last season of Gotham. Even if she didn't get the screen time, a lot of fans would have hoped that she got. In case you're wondering, I am those fans. I'm not a huge fan of the Jeremiah Joker arc. I definitely feel like it was a downgrade from the original Jerome Joker story, but the Echo character was absolutely the silver lining to this plot. Anyway, with that being said, I'm the Infuso, and I thank y'all for joining me, Pup included, and I hope to see you in the next one. Also, Pup included, you know, because because we're like, we're like, we're like YouTube pals now, so, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool if, if you came back. You know, it's fine. It's cool. I'm cool. It's cool. I don't even... I don't, I don't, like, even care. It's just whatever, you know. I care immensely. Let's do like my daddy did before my sixth birthday and move out! I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Thank you.